Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Forgive me, my mess and stuff behind here, getting my uh, portable studio up and running here and after working today and everything else trying to get this stuff together um i saw something interesting today uh you know everybody's got their top 10 list of quarterbacks and things like that you know it's all it, it, here's what i you know what I'll, I'll come back to that let's go ahead and let's try and answer a question here you know we as cowboy fans are pissed off because we haven't done anything to try and get better um the thing about the Cowboys is when they get burned, they don't do what they did again. They just don't. I think about when they went in between Brandon Carr and, um, damn, the guy, uh, defensive end from Carolina, um, Greg Hardy. They did those two, and they didn't pan out the way they thought, and so they have stayed away from them for a long, long time. Until 2020, you know, they got rid of Jason Garrett. They kind of went, said, let's go ahead and get, you know, get our feet into the water and see what we can get. Now, I, I want to bring this up because we look at this offseason and say, damn, we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything to try and help ourselves whatsoever. Well, I want to bring up this. This is from ESPN from 2020. This is what the Cowboys did in 2020 in free agency. And you tell me, should we be doing the same thing this year? First thing we did, we signed Clinton Ha Ha Dix. Clinton Ha Ha Dix, who started all 16 games for the Bears that season, signed a one-year deal. So you looked at that and said, okay. You know, he, he played with Mike McCarthy in, in Green Bay. He didn't do much when he was in Washington. You know, we'll give you that. But he started 16 games. So this is what, you know, people thought about at the time. What it means, the Cowboys need bodies at safety. Prior to re-signing Darian Thompson, they had just two safeties with experience under contract. Um, he reunites with Mike McCarthy, his coach in Green Bay, the 2014 first-round pick with 78 tackles and two interceptions last season in Chicago. So you look at that and say, okay, he was a first-round draft pick not that long ago. He started all 16 games, had 78 tackles, and two interceptions had looking at that we said shit we ain't had that from a safety in a long time that's a good signing right he didn't make it out of training camp let's go on but at the time that was thought to be a great move gerald mccoy oh sucky now i was excited about I, I ain't gonna lie i was excited about getting gerald mccoy especially the way he talked about you know, wanting his family to see him playing on Thanksgiving. I said, yeah, this is a brother that really wants to be there. The Cowboys have brought the former Pro Bowl defensive tackle. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. You mean he was a Pro Bowler? He was Pro Bowler. Oh, what it means. The Cowboys need bodies on the defensive line spot, and McCoy can get to the quarterback from the interior. They lost Robert Quinn. And Malik Collins, a free agency earlier in the day. But McCoy can play different roles in the scheme under new uh, coordinator Mike Nolan will implement. He started every game last year for the Carolina Panthers and had five sacks. He's had at least five sacks in each of the last eight seasons. Randy Gregory had six sacks last year. So you look at that and say, wow. He started all 16 games. Got hurt at the beginning of training camp. Never played it down for the Cowboys. But let's go on. We re-signed Amari Cooper to a $100 million contract. Um, we tagged Dak Prescott. Don Terry Poe. Oh, man, this is another one. I was like, okay, finally we got a big man in the middle. I know he's old, but he's a big man in the middle. The run-stuffing veteran agreed to a one-year contract, adding a big body. And boy, was it it was big. It was too damn big because he came in as a fat ass and couldn't perform on the pup list in training camp. For years, fans have wanted to see the Cowboys add size to the interior defensive line. 
And the Cowboys' run defense ranked outside the top 11 just once with him. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Defenses ranked just outside of the top 11 with him, right? Mike Nolan wants bigger pieces with the front with Don Terry Poe, who weighs 346 pounds. It's more like 380. Fits that bill. Poe will be able to eat up blockers and help linebackers make plays. Wow. Didn't bust a great. Let's go on. We re-signed Sean Lee to his 11th season. We re-signed Blake Jarwin. We re-signed Darian Thompson. We signed LP. We re-signed Anthony Brown. And you can say, you know, some people will always hate uh, Anthony Brown. But, you know, Anthony Brown has been, been a decent player for us. And we signed Morris Kaledi. Check this out. He has played in 13 games last season between the Jets and the Ravens. Wait a minute. He played for the Ravens? He played in 13 games. Okay. All right. That's good. With an interception and five pass deflections. Okay. All right. That's pretty cool. That's that's good. And then we signed Kyle Forbath. And we brought back Joe Thomas. Um, Joe Thomas didn't really help much. Justin March, CJ Godwin, Blake Bell. And we brought in Greg Zerline. Yeah, and Greg Zerline, Greg the leg. All right, so having revisionist history and looking back at what we did in 2020, we brought in named guys, older guys. None of them were healthy for most of the season. And also I will put in there that we also went ahead and got Everson Griffin. Yeah, none of them really helped us. Although Emerson Griffin probably had the best season. I think he did have three sacks before we let him go. So the hoopla of us signing a lot of players that are named players that have done stuff, what they really did, these guys, actually slowed the development of some of the guys we had on the roster. So maybe, just maybe, there is a method to the madness that is the Dallas Cowboys, and that maybe we are better off bringing back guys that know the system that are younger and definitely hungry because all these guys have been paid. And if it didn't work out, oh, well, I got my signing bonus. I got my roster bonus. Who cares? I'm out because I believe almost all of those guys I just named are still out. I think Griffin, is he still with with, the – Minnesota, I think he got cut. He had to come in and basically apologize to Kirk Cousins, but I don't think there was much after that. All right, so let's go through. I, th- this one is is crazy to me. The Cowherd, with his top 10 quarterbacks, um, surprisingly, Carson Wentz isn't on it. But I want to listen to this and, and try and understand Derek Carr being on there. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go much further than that on here. But let, let's look at this for a second. So you're saying Kyler Murray is better than Lamar Jackson? You're saying that Derek Carr is better than Lamar Jackson? You're saying that Derek Carr is better than Dak Prescott? Hmm. Justin Hubert, you know, in the end, they always talk about, well, Dak can't beat this and Dak can't beat that. Well, Justin Hubert, um, didn't Dak Prescott? beat them head-to-head in his house and make it to the playoffs? Did Justin Huber with all those yards make it to the playoffs? Um, Could some of that have been in garbage time since they did have the losing record? I mean, conceivably? I'm just saying. But you know what? I tell you what. Here's what actually makes me feel good about this. I'm okay. It doesn't really matter whether you have Dak seven or 12 or 14. That's cool. You're saying that Dak is a top half quarterback after coming back from a catastrophic ankle injury where he could not work out in the off season, who had a shoulder issue in training camp and got 
put on the last two weeks of training camp, a pitch count. Ended up with a calf strain that only missed one game for, and then also had hurt his other shoulder that he had surgery on. And you still have him close or in the top 10? Hmm. I actually feel good about that, knowing that he's healthy this year. So, with that being said, I'm actually a little bit tired. And um, this is going to take probably an hour to upload, but what you do is you play to win the game. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out.